the floor is yours. Ivan, you're muted. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, sorry. I was um, I muted myself. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Ifan, and good morning, and good afternoon, and good night. Uh, uh, I'm Ifan, and I'm at Princeton. And I first, I want to thank Psyche for giving us the opportunity to come together to uh, share our interest um machine learning uh, for food. And also, I want to. Uh, thank Elena and Max for their uh, uh, efforts uh, to organize this workshop. Uh, the, present the title of my presentation is From the Potential to the MD Kit to the Modeling. Uh, and uh, 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 let me uh, introduce you about the, the potential. So uh, the motivation of developing this the potential model is uh, we all have known that uh, in molecular dynamics, uh, uh, when we use empirical first food, it's fast, but it's not accurate. And when we perform app initial molecular dynamics, they are accurate, but uh, it's slow. So uh, it has been, uh, uh, many efforts has been paid uh, to use deep neural network to model the potential energy surface in molecular dynamics and many uh, related works has been uh, talked about in the, in the presentations in the recent days. And uh, uh, we want to develop a model that has both quantum accurate, accuracy and uh, the speed of empirical fast first food so we can uh, and we, we want to scale linearly with the number of uh, atoms in the system so in this uh, in my in 2017 and 2018 the deep potential model has been uh, developed in our group at Princeton and then many interesting applications has been done with uh, this model so uh, in the left side of the slide, I, I'm going to show you uh, some very interesting applications which can be done by the deep potential model. And you can see the quantum accuracy, uh, the, the, the very good agreement of the data, the predicted energy with respect to standardized DFT energy. And on the right side, I want to show you the scalability of our model. Uh, so you can see uh, the, the from the red line that the DPMD model uh, scales almost uh, linearly with respect to the number of molecules, uh, while the standard DFT calculations only scales uh, cubically with respect to number of molecules. So their applications are restricted to uh, hundreds of or tens of uh, atoms. And also a very important work of our deep, deep potential model, the phase uh, diagram of water with quantum accuracy has been published. Uh, and uh, uh, today, uh, my presentation will be focused on first uh, introduce uh, the construction of the deep potential model. And then uh, uh, I will show you how to use this model. And uh, this is the, the aim of our hands-on session. And finally, I will uh, briefly introduce the ecosystem of this deep potential model, many related tools and softwares, and uh, a community has been developed, uh, which is called deep modeling. And uh, many people are uh, working in uh, an open source community to uh, make, it, make, make the model and software better. So let me start with the deep potential model. Uh, as we we all know, the aim of uh, using a deep uh, a deep learning potential energy surface model is to uh, learn the results from uh, some first principle calculations and uh, obtain a model that can predict precisely the energy of a molecular system. So, uh, what what makes a good model? 
uh, a good model should preserve uh, the, the physical constraints of a system. And uh, in our case, uh, we want the model to preserve the following symmetries, uh, translational symmetry, rotational symmetry, and permutational symmetry. So uh, this figure shows how uh, these three symmetries work. The energy of the system should be invariant under translational, rotational, and per uh, permutational transformations. Uh, and later on, when I introduce uh, the detailed content of the model, I will uh, tell you how these uh, symmetries are satisfied by this deep potential model. And first, I want to show you that after preserving the symmetries, when we train the model, uh, we can lead to lower training, uh, training errors. We, uh, we can obtain lower values of loss functions. So on the left side, this is the root mean squared error of the energy during the training process. And you can see that after introducing the permutational symmetry, uh, the, the root mean squared error definitely lowers to, a, a, to another level uh, compared to uh, that without a permutational symmetry. And uh, the same thing happened uh, to the root mean squared error force. So uh, we say that after introducing the uh, symmetry preserving uh, into the model, uh, we can uh, recover faithfully like, the, uh, and the energy and force from DFT calculations. And how can the model do that? With the construction of the model, how can we construct a model that faithfully like, recover the energy and force of the DFT calculations. Uh, now I want to introduce the model construction of our deep potential model. First things first, the total energy of a molecular system uh, is decomposed into atomic contributions in this model. So we do not uh, include pair uh, contributions and contributions from angle, dihedral, all those kinds of man body terms do not appear in our model and we only have atomic contributions. And then uh, this is where the neural network comes in. So we, uh, uh, so we first convert the co coordinate of the system into a symmetry preserving the descriptor. Uh, we do this via a new network called embedding net network. And then uh, we map the descriptor of, uh, to the, the atomic energy via a feeding network. So uh, this formula shows uh, how this process works. We first have a coordinate, a set of coordinate, which a frame of atomic configurations. And then we, uh, we, we do some uh, calculations uh, through one neural network and uh, we obtain a descriptor. Then we use this descriptor to pass through another new network and then we obtain uh, the, uh, the atomic energy. The first neural network uh, to obtain the, the descriptor is called the embedding neural network. And the second neural network uh, to obtain the atomic energy is called the feeding network. Uh, also, I want to mention here that we, uh, the original version of the potential model only considers the short range contributions of interactions. And we do not include long range interactions here. Uh, this, uh, this consideration works for some cases and for some other cases, like the calculation of the dielectric constant of water, uh, we must uh, include uh, the long range uh, interactions and uh, some uh, work on the, the long, range in, long range corrections uh, of the deep potential model has been done. And uh, uh, also there has been some long range uh, mod modules in our uh, deep MD kit software. Uh, but today's talk, we are uh, in today's talk, we are only going to focus on the short range version. So in the short range uh, interaction, we have some cutoff length, which uh, above which the interaction uh, decays to zero. And uh, uh, each atom has some uh, has some neighboring atoms in the cut, inside the cutoff length. 
And uh, uh, given this coordinate and given the cutoff length, we can uh, first build an environmental matrix, uh, which is the first step of constructing the model. So we have, uh, we have a set of coordinate and if we consider one atom and its neighboring atoms, uh, there will be a neighbor plus one atoms, and uh, uh, then we will have, uh, and then we will use the the the, the relative coordinates of, uh, uh, of the atoms, which uh, naturally satisfies the translational invariance. So the translational symmetry has already been satisfied in this step, and then we construct the environmental matrix by using a weighting function, which is a one over distance uh, inside some smooth cu cutoff. And outside the smooth cutoff, this function decays to zero smoothly. So it works um, just like a window function and uh, it's a smooth function. Uh, and, and calculating this weighting function gives us the, the environmental matrix. Uh, so uh, it has four columns. The first column is just the value of the, the weighting function. And the, the next three columns are the com components on each side, uh, on, sorry, on each direction. So now we obtain an environmental matrix for each atom. And then we uh, introduce uh, the first neural network. It, it is called embedding neural network. And uh, it, uh, its, its role is that it, uh, it, 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 it we feed the uh, we feed the weighting function into this neural network, and then uh, we got the output. The output is the local embedding matrix, uh, which is used to construct the descriptor. So uh, first, uh, in the last step, we have calculated the, the value of the uh, uh, the value of the weighting function, and then we feed it into the, the neural network, and then we we got uh, M1 values uh, and they compose of a vector. Uh, so uh, putting all those M1, uh, uh, putting all those vectors with length M1 together, we have a matrix, which is called local emb embedding matrix. Uh, so it has a neighbor, uh, it has a neighbor uh, rows and M1 columns. M1 columns are the M1 uh, outputs in the uh, neighbor rows are uh, because uh, for each each neighbor we have a, fun uh, a weighting function value. Okay, so uh, now we pass through the, uh, the embedding network and uh, it's time to construct our descriptor. Uh, the way we construct our descriptor uh, works like this. We, we have our uh, environmental matrix, which we have constructed in the first step. And also we have our embedding matrix. And we can also take the first M2 columns, our, our, our embedding matrix. And then we, uh, we uh, put all those things into such an equation, uh, which are some operations of matrix multiplication. And then uh, we obtain the descriptor. And the size of this descriptor is M1 times M2, where M1 is the, uh, the output size of uh, the embedding network. And M2 is a subset of uh, these M2 uh, columns. So uh, given this formula, we can claim that uh, the descriptor intrinsically satisfies rotational invariance. It can be verified by substituting the rotational matrix into this formula. And, uh, uh, and, and the, the descriptor remains invariant uh, under rotational translation, uh, under rotational transformation, sorry. So, uh, we can claim we can further claim that uh, the energy is invariant under rotational uh, transformation so after obtaining the descriptor here we now construct a fitting network to uh, predict the the atomic energy uh, this is a very simple step we just uh, put it put our descriptor into 
a neural network. And uh, the, uh, the, the input size of the neural network is M1 times M2, which is the size of the descriptor. And the output is a scalar, which is the atomic energy. And uh, uh, now we have the atomic energy and we sum them up to obtain the total energy of the system. Uh, in this slide, I'm giving you an overview of how all those things above work to uh, obtain the, the, the total energy of a system uh, from the coordinate. And uh, you can see uh, here we have a coordinate and then we construct the environmental matrix and we pass it through the embedding network and we have an embedding matrix. And then we construct the descriptor and put it into the fitting network. And then we have the atomic energy and sum up the map to get the total energy. And then we're done. And uh, also, I want to mention a little bit about the, uh, the, the, the structure of the two, two neural networks. The first neural network is uh, embedding network, and it has a three-layer uh, MLP. MLP is multi-layer perceptron. Uh, and uh, for each layer, uh, it has the number of uh, neutrons, which, which are uh, n to n for n. Uh, where 4n is uh, just a m1, the, the m1 value, which is the dimension of the, its output we mentioned. And, and the dimension of its input is only one. Uh, it, it is fed with a scalar. So a typical choice in, in, in a training process of uh, this embedding network is 25, 50, and 100, uh, which is exactly what we're using in today's example. Uh, in the following hands-on session. And uh, also there are several sets of parameters for the network. So for the embedding network, we have several different uh, sets of parameters. And how many sets of different parameters do we have? Uh, it, it depends on uh, how we set the training process. If we uh, set the, the, the keyword type one site to be false, that means the the, the, that means the parameter of the embedding network only uh, uh, this, this, the parameter of the embedding network depends on the on which pair it uh, it, it describes. Uh, so we uh, we have k uh, k k types of atoms, and, and then we have k squared types of uh, pairs, and we have k squared. Uh, sets of parameters. And we, if we set this keyword to be true, then uh, the number of uh, sets of parameters depend on the number of uh, types of neighboring atoms. And uh, for fitting network, it, it is fed with uh, a high dimensional input, uh, which is the descriptor. And then it outputs a scalar value, which is the atomic energy. And it has three layers of uh, neurons, uh, with each layer having the same number of neurons. And uh, typically, we have more parameters in the fitting network than the embedding network. So a typical choice is 240, 240, and 240. Uh, and uh, uh, in, in the in the whole model, we have uh, we also have cases of uh, parameters uh, for the fitting network, and uh, th this uh, this uh, th this set of uh, parameter depends on which type the the, cen cen the center uh, atom is. And then I want to mention a little bit about training the model. So. When we are training the model, we minimize the loss function. And in our model, the loss function is defined as the, con the sum of contributions from uh, energy, force, and virial. And the contribution of virial is optional. Uh, and uh, uh, we use a backpropagation process to compute the gradient of the loss function with respect to coordinate. And uh, then we, minim we, we used an optimizer to minimize this loss function. Uh, also, there are some tunable parameters, p epsilon, pf, and p in the, uh, in, in the definition of loss function. Uh, and, and they're tunable uh, parameters, and they can be set in the input script of our uh, 
of our DeepMD kit software. And I will show you uh, about the input script later on. So uh, now I finished the first part of introducing the theory of our deep potential model. And then we come to the introduction of the uh, really how we do it. Uh, so I first want to say a little bit about the software DeepMD Kit. DeepMD Kit is the software to train and uh, run the uh, model, the potential energy surface. It's totally open source, it's on GitHub, so anyone can contribute it and any pull request is uh, enthusiastically welcomed. And uh, on last month, on October 14th, we just, uh, pub, uh, we just released its 2.0.3 version. And uh, when it was first born uh, uh, three years ago, uh, it, uh, support, it supported LAMPs and many uh, interesting applications related to material science and water and ice has been done with uh, uh, LAMPs plus DPMD kit. Uh, and since this summer, uh, the support to uh, more uh, molecular dynamics engines has been added. So now DPM kit also supports Gromax and OpenMM. And uh, you're welcome to uh, test those, those, those supports and give us feedback. And we also support IPI, which is a, 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 specific, a specific path integral molecular dynamics package. The workflow of using the DPM kit uh, it's like that. So we first generate our data and then we train uh, the model and test the model. And then we use the trained model to uh, run the simulation. So uh, let's first look at how an input script looks like. This is used when we want, we want to train our model after generating the data. So the, the input scripts uh, are composed of the following parts. First, uh, it has uh, some settings about the embedding network and fitting network, which we have discussed in detail before. Uh, in the first uh, um, graph, uh, the first line to the 15th line, I, I'm showing you the settings of the embedding network. So you can see some uh, parameters I have discussed before, like the cutoff length and the number of neurons and also access neuron. It is exactly M2, which is smaller than M M1 I have just mentioned earlier. And also the fitting net, we have the same uh, number of neurons uh, for the three layers. And also the training, uh, the, uh, uh, also, we, we can set the training options, like the learning rate, how the rate, learning rate decays. Uh, for example, in, in this task, we are setting the ex exponential uh, decay of the learning rate. And for and, uh, the learning rate decays for each uh, 5,000 steps. Uh, and also, we can uh, set the parameters of the loss function. I mentioned there are three tunable prefactors of each uh, term in, in the loss function. And here we are setting the first two to be 0 0.02 and 1000. And we're ignoring the contribution of virial to the uh, loss function. So we are only setting those things to zero. Uh, EFV means energy force and virial. And also we specify the data set. Uh, so typically we generate our data using VASP and uh, quantum espresso. And uh, uh, we, we are trying to put some, uh, some training data on the website. So uh, later on, I will show you uh, where to download some very typical training data from our website. And uh, we uh, just uh, specify the directory of the training data in the input script. And then in, in the last part, we are uh, specifying some training options, like the number of steps of training and uh, where to output the uh, training result and something like that. Okay, and now I will summarize a little bit about a typical workflow of using DeepMD Kit, and then we will go to our hands-on session. So. When we are using DeepMD Kit to run a molecular dynamics with the deep potential model, uh, things often work like this. 
First, we generate the training data. There are two types of ways to generate the training data. The first type is to uh, directly use the first principle calculations. I have already mentioned quantum espresso and uh, VASP. Uh, quantum espresso is open source, so perhaps more people have access to quantum espresso. And uh, we also have the so-called concurrent learning scheme, which is a, a, a highly efficient way of exploring the, sim, uh, the configurational space. It is called DPGN, which is used to uh, 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 efficiently drive the, the MD engine to explore the configurational space to generate the, uh, to, to generate the, the training data. The most important point of DPGN is it determines which configuration to label and which configuration not to label so that you will save a lot of computational resource on labeling the data and doing first principle calculations. So the, the first principle calculations you do in DPGN is uh, the most uh, useful things, uh, the, the most useful ones, and you don't waste your computational resource. Uh, Actually, I was thinking about introducing DPGN when I was preparing for this talk, but finally I, I found, found out that the time is too limited. So I will give you some resources on this, this tutorials after I show you how to use dependent kit. And the second step we uh, do is we convert the data format from the first principle calculations. Uh, to do that, we have an open source software, which is called DP Data, and uh, it supports uh, the, the conversion of data format from various kinds of softwares. And then we train and freeze the model uh, using the, the input script I have shown you um, in the last slide. And uh, after training, we just uh, freeze it. So we have a, a file that uh, stores the parameters of the neural network, uh, which is typically dot uh, pb format and then we test the model to see if uh, our model is well trained if the tra training if the test error is small enough to be accepted if we have a satisfying model then we can compress the model so uh, db compress is a module that compresses the model by tabulating the embedding network so that we save a lot of time in inference and the compressed model can drive the molecular dynamics uh, process uh, much faster and then we uh, run the molecular dynamics and uh, compute uh, properties of interest this is uh, totally the same like what we do in uh, macro dynamics based on empirical first views. So it's just a use of lamps. And now let's go to our hands-on session. And I guess I, I used half an hour to introduce the theory. So perhaps I will use 20 minutes to do the hands-on session. Uh, do you have any questions before we go to the hands-on session? Um, Ed Edgar is raising his hand, go okay. ahead. Okay, let me go ahead. You so- have... No, 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 sorry. I, I meant sorry. Ed, Edgar has a question, I think. Okay, okay. Andy, Andy, if you don't mind, otherwise I'll delay it until later, Ivan. Okay, okay, okay. So, okay. If, if I may, um, what's the idea behind the embedding network? So if I understand correctly, it basically takes the role, if I compare it to something like, um, SOAP gap model or something. It takes the role of um, the dense of the expansion of the atomic density in, in some suitable basis. Is that correct? So it basically it is the step in between atomic coordinates and the calculation of in of invariance. Uh yes. Yeah. So you so mean uh, you mean there is some connection between the embedding network and uh, atomic density expansion? Yeah, I was wondering whether that's the analogous step in, say, a SOAP gap framework. Uh, it's in, a, in a SOAP gap framework, you take the coordinates, um, calculate an, a density distribution expanded in a set of 
basis functions and then ca start calculating invariance. Mm -hmm. So I suppose the invariance is something that you calculate after you've translated coordinates into, into an embedding matrix using the embedding network, right? Yes, I think that's very reasonable. And uh, uh, embedding network. So yes, uh, it is a way of using the, the information from the, the, the coordinates. Uh, actually, I don't have a lot of uh, knowledge of the atomic uh, density expansion. So perhaps uh, uh, I will see that and then discuss more with you later on. Okay. And, uh, so is, is there, an, um, maybe, maybe I can ask uh, differently then, is, is, is there an obvious, or is, is there an intuitive motivation for uh, this choice of having an embedding network at that point instead of some sort of basis expansion? Because yeah. it's, it's, it's tunable to the system at hand at the price of you know, basically having to optimize it during training. Yeah, uh, so I, I think that the most important thing of uh, constructing this embedding network is that uh, we need to find a way to, uh, to, to to embed the information of the physical symmetry into the network. And uh, mm -hmm. it is a way of doing that. And, uh, but isn't, isn't that what you do afterwards when you, for example, do the explicit symmetrization with respect to rotations? Uh, no, that's, that's we, we, we don't we don't explicitly do a symmetrization based on rotation. We we, we were just uh, we, we were just approving that this construction ha, uh, has already satisfied the uh, the rotational symmetry. Okay, then I need to have another closer look. But thank you. Okay, um, okay. Perhaps you can post your questions in Slack, and uh, uh, we would discuss yeah, and, that. and and have an, another closer look at the actual actual math involved. Okay, but thank you. Okay. Okay, so uh, now let's move on uh, to our uh, hands-on session. And uh, for, uh, first, I want to say that uh, although uh, many people are using DeepNote in this tutorial, I was not able to figure out uh, how to uh, use uh, the, the bash commands in uh, Deep DeepNote. So I just, uh, uh, just uploaded all the materials and my slides into the, the, the GitHub. Uh, in, so you can find uh, all the things uh, I use on the, sorry, there is a chat. Okay, uh, thanks, thanks Elena, you, uh, you, you, text, you texted the GitHub link uh, in the chat. So uh, all things I, I'm using uh, are in this GitHub repo and you can also find my slides here. So, uh, so here are typically the, uh, the, the the scripts of training and test and 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 doing the, the macro simulation uh, in uh, in also uh, plotting. So uh, you can just uh, clone this GitHub repo and uh, find what uh, all you need here. And also uh, our uh, data and uh, the trained model is stored in another website called DP Library. Uh, it is the place where uh, DP users uh, typically place their models and uh, data. So uh, the, the use of uh, DP library is quite simple. Uh, after, uh, after going into this website, uh, dplibrary.deepmd.net, you just uh, uh, you, you need to sign up an account and log in, but it's very simple. And then in we, uh, for example, we, uh, we are using an example of uh, water in this hands-on session. So we just uh, click hydrogen and search. And then uh, all things related to hydrogen are uh, listed here. We have se several models related to hydrogen. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, water and uh, methane. And uh, in, 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 this, in this tutorial, we are using this model. Uh, it was published uh, it, it was called uh, 2020.10.001, and uh, it is the model that is used in the paper of phase diagram of water. Uh, so 
uh, it has been a model that we use uh, as a daily routine in our group. Oh, there is a chat, sorry. It is also uploaded on deep note. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you, Elena. Uh, and after uh, after entering the, this website uh, uh, here in data, uh, if we click this, we can download the the trained model. I said I need to log in, so I just need to log in and log in. And uh, uh, let me show you. Uh, you you can click data, and then uh, you will be able to download a, a file called frozenmodel.pb. It is the model that uh, that is used in uh, the molecular dynamics. So if you just want to use this model to perform your molecular dynamics, that's it. Then the rest of things you need is the lamps input and you specify the uh, name of this file in the lamps input and then you are done. It's quite simple. But if you want to see uh, the, the training data and you, if you want to train the data further by yourself, you can download the raw data here by clicking raw data download. And then you will have a tarball, which uh, includes all the things that, that are used to generate the data and uh, train the model. So I have downloaded this tarball in my, onto my computer. And after opening it, uh, we can see that First, there is a VASP input, uh, and there are some NCAR files and POCAR files uh, that perform first principle calculations. And also, we have the training uh, scripts, uh, which are used to tr train the model. Uh, in, fact, in fact, the most important thing we want to use is this input.json file. And uh, also, the, the generated data uh, are stored in this uh, in this tarball, so you can also see it. Uh, and uh, uh, I just uploaded my uploaded the the, the downloaded uh, PB file onto my cluster, and uh, I put it in the folder of this GitHub repo. Actually, I was thinking about also putting this. PB file into the GitHub repo, but it was a little bit large. So I, I was not able to push it into the GitHub repo. So uh, I apologize that you have to download them separately. Uh, and uh, when I come to the this folder, uh, we have several things. Uh, so th this is the, the folder from the GitHub repo. And uh, you can see we have train data, uh, which is uh, the, the, some training data copied from the copied from the the the, the, the hardball uh, downloaded from the library, and also the test data, which is uh, some uh, data some subset of the the data in the hardball which are not used which are not used in the, the, the training process. We use this set of test data to validate our uh, model to, to verify if our model is well-trained. And then the test folder is uh, the work directory we use to test our model. And the, the MD folder is the, the, the work directory we use to, uh, to run the molecular dynamics simulations after we obtain the model. So we first enter the train data uh, folder, and then we will find there are several data folders, uh, data init, data eater, and then others. And also I created uh, three folders. They are called train, convert, and compress. If you want to train the model yourself, uh, then enter the train uh, folder, and then you will find uh, uh, an input script called input.json. And, and uh, uh, it looks like this. It's uh, very uh, similar to what I showed you in the slides, and uh, uh, it uh, and the, the the directory to the training data was properly uh, set. 
So if you want to train it, you just uh, use the command dp train and uh, input.json. Uh, and then let me show you my uh, Slurm script. So I, in, in the Slurm script, I just use dp train input.json and I submit it to a GPU node. And uh, let me show you, I submit it. Uh, perhaps uh, I use another folder to not to uh, overwrite my old files. Train that Slurm submit. Didn't do that. As the training data is specified properly, so I just spatch and uh, I submit it, and then I'm running the training process in uh, on the GPU node. It takes a little bit time to uh, initialize, but if I show you a successful fully initialized uh, task, it looks like this. So this is the output uh, of the, the training process. And uh, we have several, uh, several checkpoints during the training process. Also, we have a file called lcurve.out, which stores the learning curve of the training process. And you can see the rooming square error of the training set process in, in this. Uh, uh, actually, uh, typically, when doing some when training training some neural network, we should also have the validation. Uh, we should, should also have the uh, room mean square error on the validation data, but we don't have it in this L curve that out because we didn't specify the validation data in the input script. And uh, if you want to specify some validation data, you can uh, simply modify the input script. And I highly recommend you to do so. Uh, I didn't do that because I just, uh, I'm just doing a very simple uh, demonstration here. And you, you, can, you can also find the learning rate decay in this L curve that out file. After finishing this training process, I use a simple uh, I use a simple command called dp freeze to freeze the model from the those checkpoints. And after freezing the model, I obtain a new file uh, with the format .pb, which stores the parameters of the neural network, and uh, uh, Okay, I just use this uh, DP freeze. Uh, okay, I, I want to mention that all the commands I'm using today uh, are stored in the commands.sh file. So you can see DP train, input.json, and DP freeze. And if you want to try it yourself, you can simply find the, all those commands in this file. So I'm freezing this model and it should be quite quick. Okay. Now you can see that I have an additional file called frozenmodel.pb, which is the model I have trained up to this time point, and uh, it stores the, the parameters uh, trained up to now. Uh, if, we, if I want to use this model, I just uh, copy it to other places where I want to use, and uh, for example, compress it and test it, but uh, since, uh, I didn't train it for, for enough time. It is just a very rough model and uh, I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use the model downloaded from DB library. And it was a well, it was a well-trained model. Uh, one possible issue is that the model we just downloaded was published that year and it was designed for the uh, first version of DeepMD kit and there are some differences between the first version and the second version. So we cannot use the model for the first version directly. And uh, deep, deep MD kit provides a function called uh, DP convert from, which converts the model of the first version to the second version. So we, uh, we enter the, another folder called convert, and then we use DP convert from and uh, uh, 
uh, we can see the help information and the command looks like this. DP convert from, we specify the input is frozen model.pb and we specify the output is convert out.pb. And also we, uh, we can specify the version of the, uh, the old model and uh, then we will obtain the, mm, a converted model, which is compatible with the second version of DPMB kit, and we call it convert out P, dot pb here. This is the model we are going to use to compress, and then we enter the folder compress, and uh, we copy the converted model here, and uh, then we also uh, put the input.json here. I want to mention that the input.json script is also different for DeepMD Kit version one and version two. So I just, uh, and, and the, the, the file, the, the script file you downloaded from the DP library is for version one. So I just wrote uh, a version two compatible input script and provided it for you on GitHub. So you can take a look at it. It is the same as what we used uh, in the training part. And we put these two files, input.json and convertout.pb here. And then we use dp compress, dp compress uh, to compress the model. So the command looks like this, dp comp compress dash i to specify the input model and dash o to specify the output model and dash t to specify the training script. And then after uh, compressing the model, we obtain a file called compressed.pb, which is a compressed version of the neural network model. And this is actually the final model we are going to use to perform our molecular dynamics simulation. And then we come into the test folder uh, where we, we are going to test our model. And we copy the, the compressed.pb to this folder, and uh, we simply perform the, the test command, which is dp test. And uh, this dash s specifies the directory to the test data where, uh, and I have, uh, I have uh, put the test data uh, in, in, in the folder. So this, this test folder was, uh, copied from the, the, the tarball downloaded from DP library, and it is not specified in the training part. So we can use it to test our model. Uh, and uh, we uh, specify the, the output file of the, uh, of the testing process and uh, some other, uh, some other uh, options. And, and then we obtain the testing results, uh, which gives, uh, on the, in the first column is the test data, and uh, in the second column is the predicted data. So the, 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 the difference between these two columns of data represent how accurately, how faithfully we recover the DFD data uh, with our neural network. And uh, after obtaining this test data, we can make some plots like this. We, uh, we plot our uh, test data, test set, and uh, our predict data here. And then we obtain a figure that shows uh, the data points on the diagonal line, which shows a good agreement between the test data and the predicted data. And also, uh, this is for energy, and we can also do it for force. And uh, th this model also recovers faithfully the force. Uh, also, I also I plotted the learning curve in this note notebook, and uh, and this is the decay of uh, total mean squared error, and this is the decay of learning rate. Uh, since uh, I just uh, ran a very short training process, it uh, it we, we didn't see the, the actual trend, uh, but after we, uh, uh, we run a simulation, which is long enough, we can observe the learning rate to decay uh, exponentially. And uh, after testing the model, we know our model 
recovers the DFD data faithfully, and then we can perform finally the, the, the MD simulation. So we enter the MD folder, and then we can see a little bit about the LAMS, in, LAMS input script, which is really a simple script. We just uh, perform a uh, 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 an MV, MVT MD simulation, uh, which is in the, the canonical ensemble, and uh, we compute the radio distribution function of this molecular dynamic simulation, and uh, uh, we, yeah, the system of the, the system we are simulating is. It is stored here. We are using a very small 192 atom water system to demonstrate it. And um, the, the script to run this simulation was also put here, MPI run and MP. It's very simple. And after running it, we have a file called temp.rdf, which stores the radio distribution function. And I'm plotting it for you here. Since I only ran for 1,000 steps, and uh, I didn't thermalize. Uh, it's a very rough curve, but you can see it looks like a, a radio distribution function. And if you're interested in the science behind it, you can definitely do a longer simulation and uh, you can uh, you can do, calculate a very accurate RDF here. So I'm just uh, uh, introducing so, 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 so this is how we use DeepMD Kit to run a simulation here. Uh, and uh, if you are interested in uh, more advanced things like uh, how to use DPGN to perform the concurrent learning scheme to generate uh, training data. And also if you are interested in enhanced assembly, uh, if you use PLAMD to uh, to perform enhanced sampling, I highly recommend you to go to our GitHub to find another workshop material which uh, describes in detail uh, on how to use DPGN and uh, the combination of DeepMD Kit and Plant. And also, we uh, several days ago we just uh, plotted, uh, we, we just posted another blog which describes how to use DeepMD Kit to. Uh, to train a model on graphene, and uh, we provided our all of our scripts, both uh, both uh, with VASP and uh, Quantum Espresso on our GitHub, and uh, you can find uh, the blog uh, the, the the blog on Nvidia's website, and we also used Nvidia's container uh, NGC container to. Uh, uh, to deploy the PMD kit, so you can simply pull uh, the, the, the the image from the the con the image container and then use it. And uh, you can also find the 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 the, 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 the input scripts, uh, both generating the data, training the model, and running the simulation on this GitHub. So, finally, I will briefly talk a little bit about the deep model community. Uh, Deep Modern community uh, is a community of people we are uh, we gather together due to uh, the development of Deep MD Kit, and we are aimed at developing good open source software so that we can perform uh, molecular simulations better. And uh, on our GitHub repo, we have several good, really, uh, really fantastic projects. Uh, including DeepMD Kit. We have DPGN, which is used to generate uh, data for DeepMD Kit. We have DP Data, which uh, converts the format of data. And we have DPKS, which uh, learns the uh, Consham uh, density functionnel. And also we have Abacus, which is uh, another electronic structure software to generate uh, data for uh, to, to perform the, the electro to perform the D DFD calculation to generate data for DeepMD kit. And uh, also the uh, the materials for this workshop is also in this GitHub and uh, I 
the, the, the materials for the graphene uh, tutorial is also in this GitHub. So you can find several very useful resources that really lowers your uh, learning curve of deep, uh, deep MB kit in, in this GitHub. And uh, if you have any questions on setting up the environment or running the simulation or any other interesting questions, you can just email me at ifanl at princeton.edu. And I'm very happy to uh, chat with you about any questions. So in the last slide, I listed the references and the, the literatures on the deep potential model, the software and the DPGN, and also the deep MD kit with high performance computer, uh, which was done on summit last year. And uh, uh, there are also some very useful things I didn't list, but uh, I'm very happy that I have the opportunity today to share with you uh, my experience with the PMD kit. And I thank a lot for your patience. And I thank again for Elena and other organizers to give me this opportunity. Uh, thanks a lot for your time. And uh, this this is all what I want to talk in this presentation. And thanks a lot. Thank you very much for your talk, Eva. And I think we have a couple of minutes for questions, including those in the chat. Um, so if anyone has any, do you raise your hands? Um, and meanwhile, uh, Ganesh is asking two questions in the chat. The first one is, um, could, could you talk a little about the input data format and is it compatible with ASC? Uh, and, okay, uh, I, I will answer this question first and then perhaps we go go to the next. So uh, the, the input form data format is uh, in the, uh, can, 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 can be two types. The first is called a raw, which is uh, readable, uh, human readable. The second is MPY, which is a Python format, which is uh, the, the binary format and we cannot read. And both of them can be converted from other uh, format uh, using DP data. And on the GitHub uh, website of DP Data, we have a list of which type of format it can uh, be used to con convert the data to uh, DeepMD Kit readable format. So we have VASP, we have LAMPS, we have Gaussian, we have Quantum Espresso, and uh, ASE, their ASE. Uh, I didn't see ASE here, but if you are in need, you can just uh, you can just put a put a put it in GitHub, and and, and uh, perhaps we we can add the support for you. And, and so if you are in need, uh, you can you can tell us your need, and we. Perhaps we can add that support. Uh, thank you. And then there's a second question about, um, it, it says, is, is the soft embedding added to address and physical short range interactions? So is the soft embedding added to address um, physical sh short range interaction? Yes. So originally we, uh, the first, the very, very first version of this deep potential model uh, was not, uh, there was not such soft embedding. There was not this smooth uh, smoothing function. It just, uh, it, it just uh, jumped to zero at the cutoff length. And there is some unphysical, uh, unphysical phenomena. And uh, uh, when you, if you run a simulation with that kind of model, you, in the micro canonical ensemble, you even see that the energy is not conserved. So uh, this is the, the reason why uh, the, the soft uh, embedding, the, the smooth function must be added. Uh, does that answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you. Yeah, thanks. So uh, can I also ask a question? Or okay. 
sorry if there are other questions that i know i think we I, don't, i don't see anyone else at the moment so go so, ahead i don't know whether this has been addressed because i was involved in some teaching so i just came back but i'm just curious i mean about can you shed some more light on the descriptor that is used because my impression is that it is related to the bello pinello style descriptor in the sense it's related to symmetry functions it's also a three body correlation function do you think uh, uh you can shed some more light on what descriptor is used here shed some light on in the sense just three describe, body just describe a uh, a detail sorry just just this did describe what descriptor you're using uh you mean using a uh, describe some detail of the descriptor here yeah, or yeah. Uh, that the descriptor here uh so i i think i have uh described a lot about the descriptors okay. in this in this presentation uh the descriptor is uh i think the most important formula is this all mm. other things in the, the the definition of descriptor are well defined okay. we we have the, the the embedding matrix so g is the embedding matrix g1 is a full embedding matrix and g i2 is the, the a subset of the, the embedding matrix and uh, r tilde is the environmental matrix which is a function of coordinates so it is fully well, well defined i think and, and and actually the thing one thing that can uh, can vary in this definition is how we use the, the environmental matrix we can use the full environmental matrix and uh, if you use that in our input script uh, it is called uh, uh, need to show you uh, input that's Jason. Uh, so if I use the full environmental matrix, which has four columns here, if I use all of, of this matrix in this place, uh, this model is, the, the, the type of this descriptor is called SE, uh, E2, A. And, uh, uh, we call it A because uh, it has all the, uh, the all the four columns of uh, this environmental matrix, uh, including the the last three lines. So, so it can include the the angular information. And uh, if I use the descriptor uh, which is called uh, S E E two R, uh, yeah. if if it is S E E two R rather than S E uh, E to A, we are only using the first column of this environmental matrix, and we, we, we ignore the last three columns. And since the first column only includes the radio, radio. Yeah. Yeah, radio information, we call it R. And okay. uh, yeah, and I think there is also a type called you... SE3. I see. Yeah, it, it is much more complicated, and it uh, the, the R2, the matrix is, uh, it's much larger than this and uh, uh and if you are interested in it, that perhaps we can discuss more in detail later on yeah i think if you can share the link to this paper that would be great because i also received some messages from people okay. asking what the reference was for this so i think then we can have a look yeah okay 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 yeah but uh, not I... now i think you can do it later on yeah okay okay, okay maybe okay. other people can ask questions but thanks a lot good good good, good. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your question. More questions? Yeah, there's a question from Ivan. Um, okay. Do you want to go ahead or should I read it? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, I want to go ahead. So thanks for the great talk first. Enjoyed your talk. So I want to ask uh, whether you compared your machine learning model to uh, the other machine learning model, for example, GAP, MTP, and NNP in terms of performance. So. Uh, Shortly speaking, how fast is your model? Uh, you mean the speed of our models? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I can provide you with some data. Mm -hmm. uh, on V100 GPU card, if we want to uh, compute a water system, which is uh, of the size of 10,000 atoms, uh, we can compute uh, 
sorry, let me see. Uh, we can compute for each second uh, 40 steps. And uh, we, we use the, the, for example, we use the, the, the time step of 0 0.5 femtoseconds. So let me show you. Mm -hmm. uh, so 0 0.5 uh, femtoseconds for a step and uh, 40 steps for a second and uh, 60 seconds for a minute and uh, uh, 60 minutes for an hour and 24 hours for a day. And uh, we convert femtosecond to, uh, for example, picosecond. Uh, and that should be, uh, and we, we then further com convert to nanosecond. That should be 1.7 uh, nanosecond for a day. So almost two nanoseconds a day. 1.7 nanosecond a day for a day. Yeah, okay. and it's it's a large system. It's uh, it's for ten thousand atoms. It's for ten. Wow. Yeah, and only one card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I suppose I will ask uh, the rest of the questions in the chat because I have many okay. questions. It's welcome, a... welcome for for the questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um...